Hey guys, welcome back. So, been busy the last few days, having a crazy work schedule, so I haven't been able to work on my car, thus we didn't have a video yesterday. But, got you a little something today. So, after waiting, I think about five or six weeks, our new rods came in. We got a set of Curlo H-beams, the fancy ones with the car bolts. Uh, this is the last part we were needing to build our motor. Now, over here, we have another set of forged rods. These are the Max Peating connecting rods. So they actually contacted me and sent me these to review and I just never reviewed them because well I couldn't afford to build the whole motor and uh but now I am. So I'm going to show you guys uh both sets of rods and kind of do a comparison. So I really can't remember the numbers but these are cheap. Uh these are probably like 300 bucks, 400 bucks, maybe less. These are cheap. These were man I think I paid about 1200 for these. So you know, the question is, are the Krillos three or four times better? Well, probably not. But I bet you they're better. So we're about to look at them, see what the differences are. So we just flip the boxes open, and here's the, here's the packaging. You can see these, we got some, yeah, who cares about packaging? Let's just look at the rods, how about that? All right, here's what you came to see. So, let's check these out. We'll start with the Max Peating rods. So here's the small end. These look fairly beefy can see it's got kind of a coarse surface finish to it and this we compare that to the Corillos it's a little bit of a smoother surface finish if you're in your fingernail against it it's actually quite a difference they're both shot peened you can tell that but it's got definitely got a smoother surface finish machining looks smoother as well so there's the small end let me try to zoom this in all right here we go you can see how that's machined. Now we're going to go to the Max Peating ones. You can still see a lot of the marks on that one. Just not as... I mean, it's machined, but... Yeah, you can kind of feel the machining marks on that. Whereas on the Krillos, that looks like it was ground. Very smooth. So the bushing... You can see that. You can see a lot of marks on it. And... This Max Peating has one oil hole in the top of the uh, the top right there to feed oil to it. <clears throat> we can see what the bushing looks like. Now let's go to the Krillo. Here's the bushing on the Krillo. Looks smoother, the way it's machined. And it doesn't have that oil feed trough like the other one has machined. What it does have is two oil holes. So you're gonna end up with, you got two oil holes instead of one and both oil holes are on the bottom, not the top. Which I would think is better because most of your splash lubrication is coming from the crank and getting slung upwards. So I got a feeling this bushing would get lubed a lot better than the Max Peating one. Also, you're going to have more surface area because it doesn't have that oil channel machined in it. And it looks to be like just a better machined, smoother finish compared to the other one. Let's see. Go to the big end. Let's start with the uh, Max Peating again. Actually, let's look at the beam structure. So this is something I've noticed that kind of varies from different brands. So the max peating in this regard looks pretty good. You can tell that basically the beam is about as wide as it is at the top. Now let's compare that to the Carrillo. These are actually exactly the same. You can see it comes off square, so it never necks down at all. See how the beam just stays perfectly straight to the top? You'll notice on this one it actually necks a little bit. Kind of right in this region just a little but some rods are actually a bigger offender and they neck down even more and you really don't want that that beam width is a big thing on a hbm rod so acrylo wins in that regard on that feature let's start looking at this section see how that's machined well forged and now we're going to go to the acrylo So, let's see, do we really notice anything? Well, you see the oil holes machined right into it. Short of that, I don't really notice a huge difference. I'm trying to do a comparison real quick, see if I can spot anything that's obvious. I guess one thing that's a bit obvious, this is more radius. how that metal gets machined, or the way it was forged, kind of has a radius to it. Whereas on this one, it has a sharp edge. 
yeah that shows up on the camera pretty good so that's just like a sharp edge that would be a stress riser compared to on the Krillo that's a uh, more rounded over yeah you can kind of hard to get perception like that on the camera but that's a radius that whole beam is rounded into that so that's kind of nice that'll help reduce stress in that area so it doesn't crack let's go to the big end we'll start back with the uh max peating here's how the beam transitions into the bolts uh, you do have a sharp edge right here you can see the bolt goes in you can see all the sharp edges where the beam meets and let's go to the Krillo. <clears throat> same thing so this one does have the one sharp edge here like the other one did and let's see this area at the top here is radius. We still have a sharp edge where this bolt meets. And then where this where this beam kind of folds over to this material, on this one that has a radius. On the max peating, that's just a straight edge. We'll go back to the max peating real quick. See how that's a sharp edge? So another radius point goes over to the Krillos. Um, I believe that, so the Krillos actually have smaller bolts. Uh, well, I say that. I sure don't look smaller. Maybe I should check on that. Let me uh, pull the bolts and I'll let you know on that. Alright, so we got the bolts removed. And they look to be about the same size. There's a few notable differences, but oh, generally the bolts look the same size. So this is the Max Peating. It's, a AR, it's labeled as an ARP2000. And here's what it looks like. It does appear to have rolled threads. You can see the portion of the bolt before it begins to neck down you know it's a decent amount there before it starts to neck and then on the tip they just barely kind of hit it with a center so I guess that's for like light weighting or something now let's compare that to the Krillo uh, the bolts that came with the Krillo so these begin to neck down a lot sooner they also appear to have rolled threads now this one actually had some kind of lubricant on the threads when I took it apart the uh, other one was dry and then if you go down to here, this part <clears throat> actually has like a hole drilled. So it looks like there was uh, more effort to lightweighting the threads as compared to the max PD. Uh, One other difference that I noticed was that on the max peating, once I got the bolt loose, as I spun it, you could feel it spin and grab, spin and grab, spin and grab. It seems, seems like something was rubbing. Probably just on the fastener, I'm guessing. Maybe it wasn't perfectly round or it's just tightly toleranced. Not sure. But on the Krillo, once I broke it loose, it spun out freely. It didn't seem to rub on anything. Another interesting difference. So if you look at the Krillo, you can't even see the seam on this, which could be a good thing. So the way they... Sorry, this focus is so bad. But yeah, there's a split there, but you can hardly tell. I think this is kind of a, a good thing. <clears throat> the... Uh, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. It's just barely there. When you go to the Krillo, it's much more pronounced. But what I think they're actually doing, they're just deburring this. Rub the two bolt together. So I'm sure, you know, just beyond that, they are flat. Uh, but one interesting thing I noticed. So, now this is the Krillo. The bolts are taken out. So there's a little bit of a gap now because they're not tight. But you can see, here's how the machining looks on the Krillo go back to the max peating here's theirs so let's see as far as like surface roughness that's kind of rough let's see acrylo that's a machine I don't know if that's really ground but it is a lot smoother for whatever that's worth let's see the honing and core. so this is the Max Peating, you can see all the hone marks in it. Fairly rough. It's definitely been honed. Here's the Krillo. It's also been honed. It actually feels about the same. I think those are pretty similar. <clears throat> now, let's look at the big end of the rod. So here's where the bolts meet. So you can see the casting. You can see how they did that. How it's got these sharp edges where that flange meets the beam on the back of the rod. Now let's look at the Krillo in comparison. So it still has some of this, but it's much, much less pronounced. You can see there was an attempt to take that beam and kind of radius that into the flange. 
and they still machine the flange flat. But they didn't cut the whole flange, they kind of like cut a pocket where the bolt goes. You can actually see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to show. Anyway, they didn't cut into it as much. When you go back to this one on the max speeding, they cut that one quite a bit. So I'm guessing this is a thicker, the bottom is probably a lot thicker on the max speeding. Yeah, so there's your max speeding. We'll go back to the Curlo. Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit thinner. I don't have a number. I probably could, just a second. Okay, so essentially this distance here from here to there is about 0.4 inches on the max speeding. And it's about 0.3 inches on the Curlo. So they definitely have less metal there to save weight as compared to the max speeding one. So interesting, different design. You can tell that Max Speeding was really trying to take away metal anywhere they could to save weight. So, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my summary of these rods. I mean, so for for what I was doing, I thought it was worth it to get the best rods I could. Um, like I said, if I think these are around three hundred bucks, these are twelve hundred bucks. So, is this rod four times better? No, it's not. Is it any stronger at all? Maybe. So I think the beam, yeah, there's probably one other thing I should show you, but actually, I bet you there is a notable difference. So let's zoom in. This is the max peating. Get this zoom going. You see how thick the beam is on this one? This is the max peating. Now we're gonna go to the Curlo. It's a little bit thinner of a beam. It's not as wide as compared to the max peating. It's also, more radiused. You see this one's got kind of sharp edges. See that? That's actually a pretty sharp corner. On the max speed on the max speeding it's a sharp corner on the Krilla that's a curve. So <clears throat> if you just pushed on the beam, I bet you that the max speeding is probably a stronger beam. It probably is, at least design wise. But it does have a lot of sharp edges, so maybe it would crack there first. I kind of doubt it. I think the big thing that you're probably gaining by going to the Carrillo is you're saving weight. That's probably the biggest the biggest difference you'll see. Because everything on this Carrillo, like look at the small end. So if I was to do max peating, how much meat it's got right there, how much metal there is. You can see the top and the bottom look even. Now if I go to the Carrillo, It just doesn't seem to be quite as beefy up there. But, like I said, I think the Carrillo, they're essentially trying to get their strength by, through quality, using like really strong materials and good QC processes and good design and really radiusing things and trying to keep the peak stresses down. And the max peeding, they forgo some of that uh, and drastically bring the cost down. <clears throat> so, overall, I would recommend running these max peeding rods. Uh, I think I can show probably, you know, five or six things that are not as good on them as compared to a Krillo, but, you know, some of this is, you know, it's not as big of a deal. Like, yeah, these bolts, you know, these are ARP 2000s. That's a pretty strong fastener. I think that's like 220 KSI, whereas these are, I think these are approaching like 300 KSI. So if you're going for super high RPMs, <clears throat> you know, this Krillo is stronger. And if you go to super high RPMs, that lighter rod's gonna put less load on your bearings. So I really think that if you had to pick one reason to run the Carrillo, it would be for the weight savings for a high RPM motor. If you just carry, if, you don't, if you're not revving it high, save this rod, I would probably take this rod to 8,000 comfortably. I mean, I've revved, I've run these type of, not this brand's rod, but a similar one to like 85, 86. And admittedly, I had some bearing wear issues, but the rod wasn't a problem. So I don't think you're really going to have a rod problem, but these heavy rods might cause more bearing wear. So that's the only thing I could say. If you're going to go above, say, eight grand, then you might consider going to a Carrillo to save weight and improve bearing life. Anyway, that's my summary of these. Uh, I know there's a weight difference. I forget what it is. Let's, uh, these are showing 448. I don't know if this has any paperwork for that. Maybe it does, but... These are probably 500 and something, if it's even here. Yeah, I don't see it. But I think these are like 500 plus grams. So anyway, yeah, I don't see it. <clears throat> but yeah, that's the big difference on these guys. So 
I'll take it easy.